Hi, this is Woody, the Unexceptional Gamer, bringing you a game of Domination on High Rise. So I'm using an M4 with Scavenger Pro, Stopping Power Pro, and Ninja Pro, if I recall. Now, I have the Charlie spawn here, and my typical route off the Charlie spawn is to cap this flag and then go out the window on the right and fight for control of the helicopter area. Uh, sometimes they'll rush through there and I can get some kills. And what I do here is a little different. I decide right away that I want two flags. So the thing about Domination is the team with two flags is the one that should have the higher KD. It's dangerous to cap flags, and uh, when you're trying to get from one to two, you have to take a lot of risks. On the other hand, the other team can sort of you know, set up their defensive positions and make it really difficult for you to capture that, that flag. Now these flags are in a straight line, as opposed to the triangular maps like Afghan or... Um, I don't know, it's skipping my mind. But these maps are in a straight line, which makes Bravo the really critical one. And that's why I spend a lot of my time in this part of the map holding Bravo. So once you have two flags, you're in a nice spot. You can sit there and, and work your defensive positions and do your thing. But uh, it, my team is fairly aggressive in this game, and that means that they spend a lot of time uh, trading AC, 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 running back and forth and, and rushing the enemy's spawn. I had started to head toward their spawn when I realized that, that, it, that it was indeed their spawn, and that's not what I wanted. I wanted to make sure that we held Bravo. So that's what I do there. And uh, shortly uh, coming up here is a Predator fail. I, um, I'm going for this guy, and if I remember right, he's by the propane tank. And, and if I look at it, I didn't actually hit the propane tank, but it, it worked out that way. So watch this. It's aiming towards the ground, but the propane tank sort of sucked it in, and... and it was just too close. So no kills. Now I want to rush out here, but I saw there's, there's two fresh dead bodies right there, and it, it seems like a bad idea. So I, I find another way to go, and, and after a little bit of deliberation here, and I think I decided to head out, uh, run left, before I can die. So this is one of my favorite spots on the map, to, to hold A, B here. And uh, they're taking A, I run over here and I, I drop a grenade on it, but the grenade doesn't get the kill. And uh, there's a reason I don't rush in and take Alpha right away, and it's because the Alpha spawn is the worst in the game. So, uh, guys who've watched all my videos know I, I tend to defend the, the spawn system in Modern Warfare 2, I actually don't mind it. But, um... The Alpha spawn on this map is the worst in the game. Maybe the, the Charlie spawn on uh, Karachi. But the trouble is you can only spawn in one spot. And it's where I was just looking sort of straight in that far corner. Or as I look now behind me to the, to the edge. The point is there's only one spot that you come to life at the Alpha spawn. And it's not a very good one. If you head out the windows, which would be straight ahead of the spawn point, then you're easily beat from the uh, electrical area where you post up near Bravo. And if you try to head across, then that's dangerous too. So that guy had shotguns. And uh, shotguns are easy to deal with if you have the time. What I do is I back up and shoot the guy from 30 feet away. And when you do that, they're pretty much unarmed. I'm just outside their range and it makes them an easy kill, which is why I beat that guy. So they're going for B and I tell my team that I'm putting a Harrier Strike on Bravo and it's supposed to be this protective rain that helps them out. So I get a couple hit markers and a kill, and then a couple assists pop up here. And I take that to mean that uh, it, it did at least something for us. It helped us get some map control on Bravo. So my team's rushing Bravo, and I'm just sort of scoping things out. I didn't think we had proper map control to do it, but it turns out we did, because they succeeded uh, just before they died. I had it in my head that they were just shooting at a guy in that electrical area, which is why I'm camping there waiting for him to come out, but uh, when I see my own team go, I, I move on, waiting for these guys to push forward. Now if I remember, I'm on an 8 kill streak, so I just need one more to get to my Pavlo. What I should have done is really slow down, I wish this kill worked out, but uh, instead I stick my head out here, and there's a guy on the stairs on the other side that I hadn't noticed and uh, that's kill number one or I should say death number one
And, uh... I don't get that guy. So here's something I do do right. I don't get this kill, but, um... If you're in a situation like this, you want to lay on your belly and listen. And during that listening, you wait for him to reload. Almost everyone is going to unload their entire clip, and then you can pop your head up and get the kill. If my teammate hadn't cleaned him up, I probably would have. Nara is able to get a bunch of hit markers, but, but no kills. And uh, Sometimes the game goes like that, so you know, whatever. And up here comes my low point. I'm not sure where these guys are. Hey, Hutch is online. I'm not sure where these guys are, so I just fired through that, that orange cloth in an effort to, to spot them out, look for hit markers. And here's my low point. I aim, I think, too high on that guy. And, uh, Death Streak. So the Death Streaks are kind of a reminder to me that I suck. And, uh, um, you know, sometimes they happen, but, the, but things will pick up shortly. So that guy was posting up trying to hold Bravo, but it doesn't work out for him. And uh, I clean up this area, I get two kills, and now we've got map control. Now, now no one's past the midpoint again, just like I want them. I want them coming out of that building in a real dangerous spot. I want to be posted up in an area where I'm ready for them. We have two flags, so that means that they should be taking all the risks. They should be running out in the open, they should be pushing toward our entrenched positions where we have cover and they don't. And that's exactly what's happening here. That guy knew I was in there, but it still didn't work out for him. And it's because I had the advantage. I have two flags, and they only have one, which means that they need to take all these risks in an effort to get more map control. Uh, we're not the one taking risks. You know, they are, because we've got two flags, and we've got the lead. So now I'm just waiting for them to come my way. I don't want to do anything stupid. I do have two flags. And uh, you know, I get to make the choices because I'm the guy with the flags. I heard him coming with my headset. And uh, that makes him an easy kill. So my Harrier gets one kill coming up here. And I get the other, which brings me to the Pavlo, which is real nice. So I thought that that guy was the sniper with the shotguns, which is why I back up this far. And it leaves him pretty much unarmed. Uh, he doesn't have any chance of winning against an assault rifle when I'm outside his shotgun range. On the Harrier and Pavlos, a lot of guys tell me that I call my Pavlos too early. But I've seen this go both ways. Uh, when you have the Pavlo and the Harrier up together, sometimes they just own, and, it, and it's a beautiful thing. And the other thing is, he, one guy with a stinger can't take out both of those and uh, that helps me a lot if I wait until they take out the Harrier then um, they're well armed so I want to talk about this a little bit I put a shot in those barrels because I consider those things time bombs and, and I just set them off and, and hope for the best but watch this boom time bomb goes off as a guy's nearby and it takes him down and I've made a habit out of that, and it's a habit that works for me. The other thing is, if I'm going to be uh, holding a position near those time bombs, like say the Afghan Sea Flag, I usually explode those barrels so that I'm the one doing it instead of the, the enemy doing it when I don't want them to go off. So now we're in good shape. They're trying to come out the bottom a lot, and I'm trying to hold them in their position. I was tempted to run out here, but that uh, RPG that just went through, or AT4, whatever that was, had me nervous. And I, I expected him to rush up those air, uh, rush up those steps, but he didn't. Uh, the guy's trying to take Bravo, so I uh, I defend the objective, and then here is an engagement that I'm lucky to survive. I catch this guy sprinting, if I recall. Yeah, see, he had er, akimbo models. And uh, Kimba models are nothing to be messed around with, especially up close like that. I expect him to come back, so again, keep my distance. If this guy's going to be a shotgunner, I want to be far away from him. 
And did you see that? He fired those shotguns at me, but he didn't even get a hit marker. I was just too far away, and this guy's lucky to survive. So if there's any lessons from this, it's uh, controlling the map is fairly easy in, in high rise once you've got two flags. And uh, if you're going, to, going up against people with shotguns, back up. Make sure you're 30 feet away, and then they should be easy to kill.